Welcome to the Top 10 Gardener with Master Gardener, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and top 10 advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your garden host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of Northern Arizona. I did write an article this last week. It's, it's a popular question. It's just, are coffee grounds good for your plants or for your gardens? So I thought I would just cover that because we are into tea. I mean, we it's been chilly outside. We're all inside sipping a little bit more tea, coffee. And uh, basically what it comes down to is some folks say that's not good. Some folks say it is, and I kind of take the middle ground. And so a few coffee grounds are good for plants. They have some nitrogen in it, about, about one, one and a half percent nitrogen to your, so if you make a, a coffee tea, so about a cup of, of coffee grounds to about five gallons of water, let it steep overnight. Plants will like that just like you do. Fresh, I wouldn't say fresh coffee, no. Used coffee grounds soaked or steeped in a, a five gallon bucket of water, that'd be great. Adding to your natural compost pile, that's the best. I mean, that's just let it all. It's basically what coffee grounds are is they're green waste. So a lot of you grow buckwheat or you're growing different crops on top of your gardens. Then you'll till that in for next spring growth. It's, it's a nitrogen source. Coffee grounds are sort of like that. And so a few grounds on top of your plants, fine, especially outdoors. Indoors, where it's a real small, confined space, it's easy to overdo it. There is some research or some folks have have said that it can weaken plants. I think because you get too much of it. And some plants don't like coffee, like tomatoes. Never add coffee grounds where your tomatoes are going to be. They don't like it. Uh, but, but hydrangeas, things that like more acidic type of soil, they're going to love it because there is an acidy uh, mix to it. Actually, fresh coffee grounds are acidic. So they're really like fresh coffee grounds. So that stale coffee you've had, you know, you bought it last year for visitors that were coming or, or you bought a flavor, you know, Man, this is this is just is not going to make the cup of joe I want. Uh, use it up outside around your acid loving plants. They're going to like that. So hydrangeas, hollies, camellias, they're going to love fresh coffee grounds. I would say used ones aren't going to be as productive for those folks for an acid a loving plant, but they'll pick up the nitrogen. So it's still still a positive. So uh, coffee grounds have nitrogen, some magnesium, some calcium, some potassium, some other uh, trace elements. So they're going to pick up on that. And so if you're doing, let's say, uh, uh, if you get access to a lot of coffee grounds, like you've got Starbucks, they are going to give you like a a trash can full every day. Uh, that could be okay, but you can get a little bit too much. So it's the ratio is four to one. So one amount, so whatever that bucket is of, of coffee grounds to about four added brown waste. So this is leaves and grass clippings and your, your kitchen waste. So things that help to compost your compost pile. Uh, four to one is the ratio. So one coffee, for the other stuff you're going to compost. This is your old foliage from last year. You're composting the pile. So four to one. More than that, it's not going to be good for your plants. Uh, okay. Worms. They love coffee grounds. <laughs> so they're going to be attracted. They're going to come in for the coffee grounds. So they're going to help compost it down. They like the taste just like you do. So it's a weird thing. Actually, if you've got a small compost bin that you're growing some worms in, to so see you've got a worm bin, you can add about a cup of coffee grounds, used coffee grounds, per week. They're going to eat that up and love it. So it might get juiced. I don't know. <laughs> it could help them. That's one key pass. There is some study, some gardeners show, I haven't quite found this to be the case, but uh, uh, coffee grounds can repel or keep snails and slugs away. There's got there's an abrasiveness to it. They don't like to crawl across it. So I haven't quite found that the case. I've got, I've got some other better snail. If you have snail and slug problems, come see me. I can show you how to keep them out of there. So diatomaceous earth is probably a better solution for that. It's an organic that you sprinkle around there. They crawl across it and it cuts their, their 
either their exoskeleton or their, their body out and they dry out basically. They just dehydrate. That's a better choice. It is good at keeping cats away. So cats don't like to muck around in coffee grounds. So if you're out there, if they're using your gardens as a uh, cat litter box, you don't want that. Put coffee grounds where they tend to congregate and they'll stop using your under your deck or around your plants. Could be a real good, good way to keep them out. Um, so anyway, that's kind of coffee grounds. It's not good. It's not bad. I like to think of coffee grounds as just more compost. It's hard to get enough. The, the challenge I find with folks is they use a few coffee grounds and thinking, oh, that's good. I don't ever have to fertilize again. No, it doesn't even come close. You need to put an actual fertilizer. Right? So right now I'm trying to juice my, my evergreens. I've got some that are a little sickly, a little thinner than I want, or they're just smaller. And I'm trying to get them to set the stage for next spring. So in March, they're going to take off with just new growth. Sometime as soon as this weather breaks, their buds are swelling right now. They're going to elongate. And things like pine trees, spruce, fir, cypress, cedars, junipers, your evergreen plants, you really only get one shot at this. They're going to grow in the spring. And whatever growth you get, that's all you're going to get for the entire year. It doesn't keep growing through the next season. So you get one shot. And so I'm trying to get a few of my plants to really set that new bud so I can maximize the growth. You can actually double down on the growth. You can you could double the growth of a plant by fertilizing it. So I'm giving my my some of my plants, especially the spring bloomers. So lilacs got fertilized, uh, the forsythia got fertilized, all my evergreens got fertilized this last couple of weeks ago. So I want to take advantage of the snow when I'm fertilized, get things going, get that stuff in the ground so the plants can pick it up and they'll actually use it to form next spring's bud bud growth. I'll juice it again when I start to see that new candle growth on a pine tree. When I start to see that grow, I'll start to out, I'll give it even a little bit more. So I'm trying to max out the growth rate. If you've got a brand new landscape, that's a good way to do it. Fertilize it now and again and you know into March, something like that, and you will get you'll double the growth rate. Uh, you'll get more flowers on your crab apples. You get more flowers on your red buds. You'll get better blooms on your lilacs by fertilizing now. And again in spring, ground uh, coffee grounds don't even come close to that. You need to actually have a, a, an actual fertilizer. So I'm using all-purpose plant food. So 744 all-purpose plant. So an organic fertilizer we put together here at the garden center. It's granular. You sprinkle it out there, pray for more snow, and it just it slowly works its way in. Feeds your worms. I was doing some planting this last week of some Arizona cypress. And uh, worms. Big, juicy, fat ones are right there on top of the ground. They were, they were just right there. And so they were happy. So I know it's cold outside, but things are still happening in the garden. They're still, your plants are still taking in moisture. They're still taking in nutrients and they're forming. They're getting ready for next spring's, you know, apple blossoms, next spring's lilac blossoms, next next year's, next in spring's new candle growth on your spruce trees. So if you can nurse that along, that's good. Now, I know we had a little bit of moisture this last week or so, but not enough, not enough to keep things healthy. It was dry so long before this last storm pattern that I, I actually watered some things. So I've got my irrigation cycling on every 10 days right now. So in the middle of the day, so I'm, I'm watering middle of the day so it doesn't freeze, hydrate my plants. And before these storms came, I actually took my hose and I actually hand watered some of my container plants. So I've got some beautiful peonies. They're starting to, the eyes of the peony are starting to show. So, you know, things are happening. They're not blooming. They're not growing, but you can tell, oh, they're setting the stage, getting ready. So I wanted to keep those things healthy. And so my snapdragons, they're not blooming right now, but they're green. I want to keep them happy. So I, I watered those. And so water goes a long ways. I think you probably should put on your radar, if you're tuned into this, you're obviously a gardener. Um, I would say it would be good to hydrate those plants. I know we had a little bit of snow, not enough to really hydrate, keep things to make a difference. And going back to the beginning, coffee grounds are good for the gardens. A little bit goes a long ways, uh, but it's not our substitute for actual plant foods. So, okay, we got a lot more in store for you. 
Got to introduce Lisa Waters on the end right after this. As the days get longer and brighter, houseplants can struggle and scorch, but we have the solution. At Waters, we've organized our houseplants from A to Z for the brightest of sunny locations, many even bloom. With experts that know plants and how to make them grow. Shipments of the freshest houseplants in town have just arrived from A to Z and ready for a bright new home. Waters Garden Center, where people who love bright green houseplants, they love to shop, found in Prescott. You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join his daily podcast for timely garden advice, seasonally right for the gardens. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott or through his website at top10gardener.com. <laughs> 